I've been asked uh, what perhaps is the simplest way of making a steering axle. Now the front axle is the only slightly complicated bit about scratch building or, or converting these vehicles to radio control. Uh, the rest, as we can see, is relatively straightforward, but the front axle is uh, inevitably something of a scratch building job. I'm very lucky, I've got a lathe, I've got CNC, I've got laser, uh, I've got all the toys I could wish for. Um, apart from the lathe though, when I did the first one, it was all done by hand. Uh, now, of course, the or my techniques have progressed since then uh, but on the whole I've made quite a few axles now and I've refined my thoughts. Now the very first uh, couple of axles um, the one uh, under or the type that was under the Morris Commercial and under the Ford Thames was I thought at the time a very very simple affair. Uh, the heart of all these axles is in fact the stub axle and it's the design of the stub axle that drives if you like the the rest of the axle. Uh, the stub axle uh, constitutes uh, the facility for the kingpin it may or may not include the kingpin itself, that's the vertical pivot uh, around which it uh, swings. Uh, the steering arm, which the track rod attaches to, and also the stub axle itself, which the uh, wheel hub or bearing fits to. Now, my first incarnation was of this type. Now that is quite simply a cube, it's about three and a half mil square of steel, brass, nickel, silver, whatever one fancied. And this was drilled vertically for a kingpin and then uh, it was drilled in one of the other faces, two mil to take the stub axle and then it had the steering arm silver soldered to it. Now these in fairness took quite a long time to make. They were perfectly effective, they're very effective, uh, but they did take time to make and of course uh, it really rather relies on silver soldering, soft soldering, a joint like that, a butt joint like that is rather asking for trouble and is much more likely to come adrift as soft solder is mechanically very very much weaker than silver solder. These are silver soldered. So that was my first type of stub axle assembly and one was made up left hand, one was made up right hand. And if we have a look at the picture on the computer at the moment uh, That was the first stub axle. Now you can see uh, the stub axle blocks, one on each side with a kingpin running through. Uh, and in fact, rather than have uh, the solid profiled steering arm coming out, this one has actually got another piece of wire silver soldered in, bent in uh, at an angle uh, with a drop down which uh, replicates on each side the steering arm and then a track rod would go in between those and control it. Uh, rather crude but it worked and then you can see these are supported on an axle very simply made of two bits of brass. The lower one is absolutely flat with a kingpin hole in there and there. 
the upper one with this uh, dog leg or set in it. Again, uh, kingpin holes at the top. And of course this was made out of a longer piece of brass in order to give the length to do that drop down. And then when I was happy with it I clamped them together and drilled through both halves and just put some wire through and crimped it with a pair of pliers and then soldered it for, for security. So that made for a very simple axle. So I thought. Um, it was a faff to make and actually in fairness used to take a couple of hours to uh, to make. Uh, but that was the first generation of axle that went under my lorries. Uh, the These pieces of brass were about 3mm wide and 1mm in thickness. So that was sort of the proportion of the uh, uh, material used. And of course this is O gauge 7mm scale, 1 to 43. So that gives you some uh, idea of scale for that. Um, my wish on these projects was to simplify it and simplify it as much as I could um, with half an eye on producing axles available for, for sale. And of course that means uh, being able to produce them quickly and easily, relatively. Again, the key to that is the bearings. Now, these wheels have got bearings in. You can just sort of see the back of the flange in there. And that, of course, is why we have the 2 mil bar stuck out there. That's to take the bearings. Now, the bearings are very nice. I'm just pulling one out. Uh, very nice miniature flanged bearings. That's a bag of them. Uh, these have an internal diameter of 2mm, an outside diameter which does not include the does not include the flange of about 5mm and they're about 2.5mm across, two and a half mil thick. So they're very compact little bearings. Um, and uh, they've, they've worked very, very well. I have found there's a, a bit of play in it. So once the thing's made up, the wheels, you can wobble the wheels a, a teeny bit, but not very much. Um, these I get from China on eBay and I uh, look around through the various vendors and uh, get as many as I can, as cheaply as I can. So those are the bearings I use uh, for 7mm scale and any similar sort of scale. Um, now I also use the same uh, business, I can't find them at the moment, um, here we are. Uh, for 4mm vehicles. Now these bearings are 1.5mm internal diameter, 4mm outside diameter and 2mm uh, overall thickness. Um, you can see these are of the type F681XZZ. Now the F681 is F for flanged, 681 is the size of these things and the XZZ uh, is referring to whether they're shielded bearings or not. I normally get shielded bearings, it saves rubbish getting in them. And again these are Jap uh, Chinese eBay specials. Um, now the uh, a breakthrough for me, for want of a better word, was the realization that uh, I could 
dispense with this 2 mil round section stub axle to hold the bearings. Now, let me just find a bearing here without throwing them around. So, I have a bearing, I have a block there, and obviously part A goes on, on to part B, and that becomes your stub axle assembly. So, what we have here is entirely logical. However, the, the cheat in me thought, well, uh, we don't require the massive amount of strength in shear that 2mm silver steel will give us. We can do, away, do with a, a little bit less without any penalty. And if we could use a normal flat section, then the stub axle could be very, very much simplified and could then be produced uh, by using CNC milling. So, we then have these little brass stub axles. Let me just point the camera down. I'm getting tired. There we go. These little nice CNC stub axles. Now, here, at this end here, we have the stub axle. And it's not round in, sec in section, it's rectangular. So uh, I'm effectively fitting a square inside a circle. And the points of contact are um, just the, the four edges. Now I deliberately mill these just a teeny, teeny bit tight so they don't quite push on. And what I do is, nervous about doing this live, um, I get a file and I just, with a couple of strokes, ease the corners. And it is literally just a couple of strokes, normally. Uh, trying to pick up the bearing. Dropped it. Hang on. Oh, dear. Uh. Right, yeah, here we go. Uh. Right, and that I'm not going to push it on all the way because it's a nice tight fit, but that is now starting to go on. So you can see it's very, very easy just to with a couple of strokes of the file, uh, get your nice bearing to fit on brass, uh, on a, a square section of brass, um, which in turn, I'm just, I'm just taking that off again, there we go, which in turn means that your complicated stub axle assembly can become a really simple profile. Now this profile uh, has a boss at the center which if you like transmits the vertical load of the stub axle assembly and indeed the radial load imposed by the stub axle the stub axle itself which is now square rather than round section and then the steering arm uh, now the steering arm I normally have the kingpin hull and the track rod hull uh, around, uh, what is it, six mil apart, something like that. Let me just check. Uh, it's near a five, near a five mil uh, uh, apart. And of course it's at an angle, it's, I don't know, at about a hundred and uh, 100 degrees, 105 degrees, as opposed to 90 degrees. And that's to give you uh, your uh, a decent geometry for your Ackerman steering. 
Uh, now, of course, the principle of Ackerman steering is, if I take this lorry uh, and get it far enough away, the steering arm, of course, pivots at the kingpin on each side. And the steering arm, if you projected a line from the steering arm, you know, the angle of the steering arm, it should meet at the centre of the back axle. So, going the other way, if you took the centre of the back axle and projected a line to your, to your kingpin, then that gives you the line and the angle for your, uh, for your steering arm. Um, and that, that gives you your, your true geometry. Now, in reality, if it's, if it's close, and I'm talking on a model here, if it's close, then you're going to absolutely get the right effect. So it doesn't uh, do to, get to be too anal about it. But if you're scratch building your own, you might as well get it right. And uh, that's what the geometry is about. Um, your steering arms follow uh, a line between your kingpin and the centre of your rear axle. And that gives you your true geometry. So, uh, we can then profile this little gizmo out of brass, nickel, silver, steel, what have you. Uh, and I set up my CNC mill to do that. And that gave me the opportunity to make these lovely, lovely simple axles.